Okay. So we are still in the era or in the area of anti new plastics, but we're going to talk about, let's say, the newest ones, the ones which do target the signaling pathways. Okay, well, they are mostly the kinases. Yani even though the first FDA approved um, uh, kinase inhibitor, لا يتجاوز عمره let's say 20, 25 years, لكن ever since let's say the introduction of that first kinase inhibitor, most of the pharmaceutical companies and betrakas uh, their interest, their research on finding kinases بيكونوا uplo- uh, upregulated in cancers. Will be, um, يعني for um, selective target therapy, okay, for cancer. Because what is good about those kinases is that many of them are upregulated in, let's say, uh, sp- uh, certain types of cancer. For the targeting them specifically, meaning that they will be selective for that specific cancer. تمام. طيب. هلا لما نحكي kinase, do you know what kinases do? Yes, they do phosphorylation, let's say, of other proteins. Now, the kinase, we'll be talking about its structure thoroughly. That enzyme, okay, when it binds to its substrate, which is another protein, another enzyme, uh, um, let's say, similar to it, or even it can be another kinase, what it does simply is that It adds a phosphate group to this enzyme. That phosphorylation, as we will see later on, is one way via which those oh, many proteins, many other kinases are activated. And that phosphorylation process, usually it leads to activation of that enzyme or that protein. Okay? Okay. This kinase, if it needs to add a phosphate group to this enzyme, its substrate, which is another enzyme, another protein, another specifically enzyme, another kinase. Where would it get its phosphate group? Where do you think it will get the phosphate group or uh, let's say um, attach it to its substrate? Look at the image. Where do you think it gets that phosphate group? Yes, from let's say a uh, triphosphate a nucleotide, in particular, an ATP. Okay, so all kinases will really almost, يعني, up till now, what is discovered is that we have 518 different kinases with many different, let's say, and diverse functions. Like in Kulhom, Bilastifna, they use ATP. As their source, يعني ال ATP بيرتبط فيهم, and this is where they get the phosphate to which they attach it to their substrate protein. Okay. طيب. هلا to understand the importance, let's say, of those kinases, look at this image. طبعا مش مطلوب يعني هي مش موجودة عندكم وأكيد مش رح أسأل عنها إطلاقا في الامتحان. But it shows you, for instance. In many, many pathological, sorry, many, let's say, physiological pathways or biological functions of cells are regulated via stimuli, for instance, the proliferation of cells, the differentiation of cells, even the programmed cell death of those, let's say, cells that have mutations or deadly mutations in their DNA. All of those are or how, let's say, cells get the order to do, let's say, those biological processes is via kinases. The kinases, they act as signaling molecules. If, for instance, the cell is triggered via any stimuli, okay, to either proliferate, to even to die, this or such, let's say, an extracellular message is conveyed eventually to the DNA via those kinases. Behind the image, everything that is, let's say, in this form or حتى اللي موجود عندي let's say باليلو um, cyclohexane like let's say shape these are let's say kinases they themselves may get activated via phosphorylation from other kinases and they do in turn phosphorylate other proteins other let's say kinases 
till they eventually get to what is known as the transcription factors اللي بتأثر على gene transcription and gene translation which let's say controls the proliferation the differentiation and even the apoptosis of cells فبالتالي if there is an enzyme or is if there is a kinase that is involved in uh, or known to be upregulated in cancer, but tell if I would inhibit that enzyme, then I may inhibit its proliferation. Uh, 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 let's say may uh, provoke an apoptosis of those cancerous cells and so on. Okay, and I'm going to the molecular biology of what or what are the consequences of inhibiting every kinase. Like, and what matters to us to understand the structure of those kinases and know the inhibitors, the structure wise, كيف بيكون أو كيف أنا ممكن أميزهم. Okay, that's what matters to us. But at least we need to understand that those kinases, they do control proliferation and apoptosis of cells. Okay. طيب. What you see in here is a خلينا نحكي database which um, lists many tumors, such as, for instance, bladder, um, let's say brain, breast cancer, and so on, and many of kinases, you don't have for sure at, but I just want to show you. Uh, there is a, a list of many kinases known to be upregulated in many cancer types. As a example, Aurora A, for instance, is upregulated in bladder cancer, brain cancer, breast cancer, and so on. And everything, whenever you see a square that is, let's say, red in color, this means in that enzyme is upregulated or that activity of that kinase between, عندي, let's say, عالية مقارنة ب in normal cells. Okay? But due to that, if I would inhibit the aurora, على سبيل المثال, A, it means I may be able to treat, for instance, bladder cancer, breast cancer, and so on. Okay, that is why there was and still a huge concern about or a huge, let's say, research effort, efforts to find and develop the drugs that do inhibit those kinases. Right. Like, to understand يعني حتى نكون uh, أو to understand very well um, the how the kinases by binding to ATP and their substrate يعني هاي let's say that structure shown in here represents the substrate of kinases okay which could be another as I've said another kinase any other kind of a protein that this kinase regulates all of them as I have mentioned bind to ATP, adenosine triphosphate, and what they do is that they catalyze the transfer of the third phosphate group in ATP to that hydroxyl group اللي موجودة عندي على substrate enzyme. Okay, and once phosphorylated, that phosphorylation may activate that, let's say, substrate protein, and in, in some cases, the phosphorylation بيخلي هالإنزيم, let's say, inactive. يعني it turns it into, let's say, an inactive protein. Again, إحنا مش معنيين بهاي process. You know, what enzymes or what kinases uh, or what, for instance, proteins in general, when phosphorylated, إيش بصير لهم in terms of their uh, 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 biological, let's say, effect. إحنا what matters to us is that kinases regulate the function of themselves and other proteins via simply phosphorylating them. Okay? Now, chemistry-wise, how they do so, the hydroxyl group in the substrate, which acts as a nucleophile, will attack the phosphate group in ATP. Okay? And this is how that covalent bond between the phosphate will hydroxyl, will uh, a substrate enzyme gets um, phosphorylated. It's simply nucleophile electrophile attack, which is catalyzed by the enzyme. And the enzyme, what it does, it brings the ATP with substrate together. It reacting hydroxyl with substrate to the ATP or to the phosphate group in ATP right close together. It activates them, or let's say it anchors them inside the active site and activates this process or catalyzes this process, okay? 
طيب what amino acids have a hydroxyl group in their side chain لا الفينيل الالانين is a methyl or a methylene with a uh, let's say a phenyl group it doesn't have a hydroxyl group three what else three union something closely related in structure to phenylalanine which is tyrosine okay for so that is why kinases are sub classified into uh, let's say um, tyrosine kinase and serine threonine kinases okay those which catalyze the phosphorylation of the hydroxyl group in tyrosine and those kinases that catalyze the phosphorylation of the serine and threonine of the hydroxyl groups in serine and threonine in their substrate proteins. Okay, let's talk about tyrosine kinase, serine, threonine kinase, because those kinases that catalyze uh, that phosphorylated serine, they can't phosphorylate threonine. They do not distinguish between serine and threonine. Okay, that is why they are combined in one subclass, which is serine threonine kinases. Okay. Very rarely, some kinases, they phosphorylate histidine. Well, histidine, as you all know, has an imidazole ring in its side chain. What is the, di oh, the difference is that it's still an electrophilic and nucleophilic, let's say, reaction. Like in the libusir, it's actually the nitrogen of the imidazole that gets phosphorylated. The histidine, as you all know, does not have a hydroxyl in its side chain, وإنما an imidazole ring, and the nitrogen in the imidazole is the one that gets phosphorylated. Okay? Type. What you see in here represents the family of kinases. As I have mentioned, there's almost 518 kinases discovered until now. And they have a diverse, let's say, or diverse functions, like in mostly they control the prol proliferation, the differentiation, and also the apoptosis of cells. Okay? Let's say another image of the kinase tree or the kinase family. Akid abadan mish ma'roof, mish matloob minkom, ta'rafu kul kinase. What is its, let's say, classification or what family it belongs to? Itlaqan. Yani, you know, we just, uh, with the image you see in your slides is only for to show you, let's say, the vast number of kinases present. Okay? Okay. Nahki hala on their structure. Bima'in homil kinases are proteins, they are composed for sure from amino acids. Okay? Hala, the kinases, generally speaking, structure-wise, they have what is known as the catalytic domain, which is the structure that we will look thoroughly in, not of exactly what it's, its compartment, when the ATP pyrtabit, it's the conserved catalytic amino acids and all that. Yeah, and we will look thoroughly or deeply inside the active site of that kinase. Okay? It is mostly composed in many uh, kinases from almost 300 amino acids composed of two loops. In the second slide, I will show you that uh, structure. In أحياناً بعض الكينازز ممكن يكون مرتبط فيها another protein. يا إما let's say through non-covalent interactions or via أو ممكن يكون مرتبط covalently what we call as a regulatory domain. أبداً إحنا مش رح نحكي عنه. But this is something for you to know. You know sometimes the kinases in a that some crystal structures. If you saw, let's say, another protein structure that does not look like a kinase, this is a prob probably the, chi the regulatory domain that is crystallized with the kinase. This represents a kinase structure. Those are two different representations. Okay, this is what is called the space field, uh, uh, let's say, representation. It just show you the surface of the protein, okay? When we in the spaces, when we in the, let's say, pockets inside and outside of the enzyme, okay? A more thorough representation is this one, what we usually refer to as the cartoon-like representation, okay? Type. What are the secondary structures of a proteins? The primary structure 
of proteins that we took in the biochemistry. It shows you that the amino acid sequence of that protein structure. The main secondary structure. Yeah, exactly. There are two, which are the beta sheets with helices, which shows in how those amino acids fold. Let's say how they are arranged. Okay. Hala. The overall structure of that protein. This is what it, what we call a tertiary structure. Hala, the kinase is composed of the what we call an N loop with C loop. Okay. Why do you think this one is referred to as N and C? What do you think those letters mean? Or, for example, N terminus, C terminus. هلا بأي polypeptide بغض النظر إيش طوله بغض النظر عن how let's say big or how small it is any polypeptide always let's say starts with an amino group and ends with a carboxylic acid group that part where it begins or let's say that part from the amino group this is what we call the end terminus okay and this is what we call a C terminus so in a kinase, لما نحكي this is the N loop, معناها this is where the NH2 is found and this is where the C terminus is. Okay? طيب. هلا ال N loop و C loop, which is bigger, you think? A C loop, okay? هلا if you look at the N loop, this one in here, composed mostly of what? Beta sheets and just one helix, which we call the one that is highlighted in blue. We call it a C helix. Okay. Type. What about the C loop? It is composed mostly of what? Helices. Okay. طب هاي اللي اللي بتبين زي ربنز هيك. What do you think we call them? It would be like a narrow, um, let's say, uh, lines. I usually refer to as loop. And let's just draw like this. Not only because it would be size-wise, it would be smaller than the beta sheet or the C helix. It only because it doesn't have a uh, a defined secondary structure. I mean, it's not the amino acids arranged in the shape of a beta sheet, or arranged as in a helix. For usually, those that do not have a defined secondary structure, we refer to them as loops. Maybe confuse them. Let's say, as I have mentioned, they have beta sheets or uh, 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 helices. Tamam? Hala, that area in between the N loop with C loop, where you see that, let's say, yellow structure, this is where ATP binds. Yani almost be all the kinases. And hopefully by the end of, let's say, those uh, of this lecture and the coming lecture, you will be able to identify and whenever you see a kinase, you can distinguish that this is a kinase because somehow they do look alike in terms of a structure. كلهم فيهم N loop, C loop. The N loop بيكون mostly beta sheets with one alpha helix. The C loop بيكون mostly is composed of helices. In between, that region, we call it hinge region. Okay, this is where the ATP binds. This is common in almost all classic kinases. All right. Type the one that you see in here in red. This is what we call a glycine rich loop. Loop because it's neither a beta sheet nor a an alpha helix. And a glycine rich because most of the amino acids that comprise this glycine rich loop is are let's say actually glycine. Hello, why it matters let's say to kinases? You can imagine and know when the ATP binds in this. Oh, usually our will kinase in in its inactive form. Or in its inactive conformation, or the conformation that does not have the ATP attached to it, usually it will be a glycine-rich loop, because it is covering this hinge region, where the ATP cannot penetrate and bind in. When it changes the conformation into the active conformation, this glycine-rich loop is removed, 
which would allow the ATP to enter to that region. OK. Hello, this one which is shown in purple, this is what we what is called as the activation loop. Remember, in nonoxyl kinases, for them to be active or inactive, one of the ways via which their activation occurs is via phosphorylation. We see the anti-phosphorylation one of the serine, threonine, or tyrosine uh, amino acid residues that are in the activation loop, when they see the phosphorylation, it changes the conformation. Yani later on, we will see how that happens. Okay? And how this leads to opening the ATP binding site so that ATP will uh, be uh, uh, able to phosphorylate its substrates. Okay? This is also another image. Yani, sorry, no, we will show you a lot of images, but hopefully, let's say, the image will representation in at least the main compartments of any kinase, which will allow you to recognize them. It could be nisbil Okay? Where is the end loop? Loop as Yeah, it's this one that is shown, let's say, in black. And this is the alpha helix, all right? And this part in here is the C loop. This is what is known as the, let's say, hinge region, or the active site where the ATP binds in. This is the adenosine part of this ATP, and these are the three phosphates. Okay? Now, even the ATP is in the active site, it has to be amino acids that form interactions with, with it. إحنا مش معنيين نعرف هاي الانتراكشنز يعني كلها فقط رح نحكي عن let's say few interactions and that's it لأنه mostly we will consider ال إنه for the inhibitors what kind of interactions they form okay طيب برأيكم الأدينوسين if it to interact with the amino acids اللي موجودة في the hinge region what do you think in the type of the non covalent interactions اللي ممكن يكونها Yeah, for sure. لا. It's non-covalent interaction. Peptide bond is a kind of a covalent bond. Van der Waals, إشي أقوى. على كل ال ال كل ال ال nucleic bases إيش في إشي هت مشترك فيهم. You know, they have nitrogens, they have NH groups, they have uh, carbonyls so in some of them. For all of those are able to form hydrogen bond interactions. So with adenosine, the kind of interactions it forms with the amino acids in the hinge region are actually hydrogen bond interactions. So when we talk about inhibitors, it's a common between them all. They need or they would have, of course, type 1 or type 2. We are only going to focus on these. Um, in all of them, they need to have ring or ring systems that do have nitrogens that can form hydrogen bond interactions. And it first designed kinase inhibitors. That was a must. You know, I need to have a ring that has a nitrogen that is able to form hydrogen bond interactions. مع ال hinge region زي ها زي الأدينوسين في ATP. Okay. هلا three amino acids أو خلينا نحكي two amino acids موجودين عندي في N loop. I need you to focus on lysine and glutamic acid. This lysine, which is hidden here, راح أحاول بمعظم ال crystal structures اللي راح نشوفهم إنه to show you those. And this is a aspartic acid, glutamic acid group. طبعاً it's definitely wrong in we put on a negative charge. And yani lysine, which has a butyl group, and at the end of it, there's a primary amine. At physiological pH, become mostly in the highly group ionized, or in other words, protonated, bearing a positive charge. Will glutamic acid which is part of the C helix. Yes, it's a carboxylate 
or it's a carboxylic acid that will be in the form of a carboxylate at physiological pH. Hello, those two will form ionic interaction between each other, and they also form interactions with the phosphates, activating the phosphates, anchoring the phosphates, hatta eventually the kinase yaakhud hai the phosphate and it on the substrate. Okay. رح نحكي let's say عن a DFG motif اللي هو which from which we can let's say distinguish ما بين the active and the inactive conformation. All right. هلا لما نحكي طبعا motif اللي هي a let's say a segment. DFG are the first letters of the amino acids اللي بتكون almost موجودة بكل الكينازس. Okay. هلا D stands for what? Do you remember? Aspartic acid. G or F. Phenylalanine, exactly. And G, lysine. This is a very important motif. In most of the crystal structures that we will see, I will show you that DFG motif, in you know, when in or out, its conformation is the uh, via which we can distinguish an active or inactive conformation. But this is a typical question with kinase inhibitors. And one can ask, for what would be the conformation of the DFG motif? B, for instance, when that specific drug binds to the kinase, is it in or out? Okay, don't worry. Yani everything. Or all of those terms, we will talk about them in detail, and we will be able to explain them more and more. The more, let's say, we go through those, let's say, information about the kinase and kinase inhibitors. Okay. So again, in the active site, what you see in here represents as if it's a cross section of the active site. This is what is called the hinge region. يعني تخيل هو كأني أنا بطلع على الكينيز from the top. This is the hinge region, or the amino acids that constitute the hinge region. This is where the adenosine part of the ATP binds in. لاحظوا إنه the nitrogens in the adenosine form hydrogen bond interactions with the hinge region. Or most of the type one, or حتى مش most, كل the type one or type two inhibitors اللي جزء منهم بيرتبط في الأدينوسين binding site, they form the same type of interactions, hydrogen bond interactions. Very crucial. If we remove the nitrogen, the compound will lose its activity. Hala, ala imtidad the hinge region. Okay, this is a segment of the kinase structure. This is those amino acids or this backbone of the hinge region. Hala, ala imtidado, we can find the residue. That is called the gatekeeper residue. Gatekeeper. What does it mean? Yeah, as if it's protecting, let's say, a a a, a room or a pocket. A like gatekeeper residue because that residue is a present, let's say, in the front or at the beginning of a pocket, which we call a hydro or considered a hydrophobic pocket. Or a specificity pocket, okay? Hala that hydrophobic pocket. لما نحكي hydrophobic معناها إنه most of the amino acids اللي بتكون موجودة surrounding that pocket or that space inside the kinase, in terms of their nature, mostly are hydrophobic, such as مثلاً leucine, isoleucine, phenylalanine, and so on. فبالتالي when designing Kinase inhibitors. بحيث إنه هل الدrug يدخل عندي في هاي ال pocket usually the characteristics of that group اللي بدها تدخل في ال bind in that hydrophobic pocket إنها بدها تكون hydrophobic in nature. So this is something you need to understand حتى to distinguish. يعني رح يكون إشي كثير رح نناقشه بالذات في المحاضرة الجاي إنه أنا لما أطلع على ال kinase inhibitor أعرف كل part of it where it goes إنه أي Part of the ring system, or a part of the drug, mimics the adenosine. A part of the ring, ممكن يدخل عندي على hydrophobic pocket ويعمل hydrophobic interactions. تمام? Here's an image 
of ATP bound to a kinase. طبعا مش كل الكينيز structure مبين. Just let's say the ATP, the binding site of the ATP and the amino acids surrounding it. Okay. Right. Um. The part in here is the N loop or the C loop. Yes, that's the end loop. Okay. And what is at the bottom of the ATP? That's the C loop. طبعاً مش كلهم بينين. Just let's say fractions of it. The one you see in here that is highlighted in pink, this represents the glycine rich loop. Okay. وكأنه بيفتح وبيسكر لما يكون عندي أو حتى يسمح للATP يدخل and it blocks أو in يعني بيسكر بعد ما الATP يفوت. تمام؟ and this is the C helix. يعني most of what constitutes an N loop are beta sheets, on except for the C helix. The C helix, حكينا إنه في عليها a very important conserved amino acids. تقريبا أنا بشوفها بكل kinases, which is the this glutamic acid E. مثلا بها specific enzyme. Its sequence number is 51. Sequence number بتغير من one enzyme to another or one kinase to another. لكن الإشي الثابت إنه على C helix دائما رح يكون في عندي A glutamic acid. Okay. لاحظوا كمان إنه أنا في عندي A lysine. And those two being ionized at physiological pH, they will form ionic interaction. And they themselves they form interactions مع the phosphate groups اللي هي مع the ATP. Okay. طيب. Let's look now at the crystal structure. Of this enzyme bound, which is Aurora A kinase bound to ATP. All right. So this is the. Can I zoom in? That's the envelope. لاحظوا إنه mostly beta sheets. This is a C helix, but شوية distorted. Now this is, oh, this represents the C loop, all right? Where most of them are alpha helices. هلا what connects, what connects a an end loop to the C loop? This one in here, that loop you see in here, that's called the hinge region. With the space in between an end loop with C loop, this is where the ATP binds. That's the ATP structure. Let me zoom in, okay, to see that structure closely. We'll show the interactions that he was doing. All right. Al ATP. That's the adenosine part, the rings that has the nitrogens. لاحظوا إنهم they form يعني at least let's say two to three amino or hydrogen bond interactions. بهال crystal structure has software فقط it does recognize one. But at least it they or the adenosine part with almost most of the kinases it forms two to three hydrogen bond interactions مع the amino acids that constitute the hinge loop or the hinge region. Okay. مش معنيين ب الانتراكشنز اللي بيعملها الرايبوز ولا الفوسفيت لانه احنا انترستد مور ان انهبيترز اوكي طيب لوك ات ذا لايسين ذس لايسين ان هير ويتش اكستندز فروم ذا ان لوب اول رايت وير يعني از يو كان سي لو انا بدي اقرب عليها لاحظوا الانتراكشنز اللي بتعملها باك the interactions, sorry, that this um, uh, uh, amino group of the protonated amino group of this lysine forming with many amino acids such as let's say this glutamate which is part of the C helix, this um, uh, um, um, 
and also in phosphates, which are part of the, of the, of the ATP. Okay? Conserved amino acid. Do you know what we mean by that? Conserved. Mahfuda. Okay? Yani in other words, if you would look at all of the kinases, okay, structure wise, ATP, P hand region, glycine rich loop, and so on. And they also have conserved amino acids, for instance, the lysine, but you can see them all. All the kinases, if you would look at their crystal structures, there is a lysine, glutamic acid, that is seen, or that is part of the C helix, and they form what is known as a salt bridge. And they do interact together, and they form also interactions with phosphates which is part of the ATP libirtabit because of kinases. Okay? We are not going to where the substrate is but for sure, the substrate, which is another protein or another enzyme, it gets close to the binding site where ATP is with tyrosine or serine or threonine, it will be very close to the terminal phosphate of ATP. It will be able to interact with the phosphorylation to that substrate. Okay? بنصحكم إنه to look at those crystal structures. يعني في أسئلة في الامتحان definitely it will include those let's say or images of those crystal structures ورح تنسألوا عن the compartments of the conserved amino acids, the ATP مثلاً إيش the interaction اللي بيعملها و later on the inhibitors إيش the interactions اللي بتعملها. Okay. هلا. بدي اشوف if we can recognize all right هلا um, recall انه حكينا الادينين forms interactions with the hinge region okay that's the hinge هلا على امتداد الهنج there is usually a residue okay which is called the gatekeeper residue هلا بهالاورورا انزيم this is the gatekeeper residue Okay, which is, let me just make sure, this one in here, which is a leucine. That's the side chain of the gatekeeper residue. Hello, tell us what is the lysine. There is space. Okay, if I want to add the space behind it, that's what we call a hydrophobic pocket. This leucine, it's at the entrance of that hydrophobic pocket. Hello, why this is important? Let's احنا بنحكي عن the gatekeeper residue. لأنه in most of the inhibitors اللي راح نحكي عنهم, the type one or type two, okay, they do have in their structure what binds to ha to that hydrophobic pocket. فبالتالي the size of that group اللي راح ترتبط بالhydrophobic pocket, okay. راح تتأثر بحجم ال 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 gatekeeper residue. طبعاً هي بتختلف from one enzyme to another. The gatekeeper residue مش دائماً leucine بكل ال ال kinases. ممكن تكون leucine, ممكن تكون isoleucine, ممكن تكون مثلاً phenylalanine. فالsize لإلها بيختلف. فا because of that هي راح تحدد مين ممكن يدخل على هاي ال file ال hydrophobic pocket وممكن مين ما يدخل. Which you think aids in the selectivity of those inhibitors, will it not? Akid. Okay. I will show you here in this slide an image where, for instance, this is the hinge region. That's the hydrophobic pocket, and for let's say two different kinases. In one kinase, this is the gatekeeper residue. In another, this is a serine residue. لاحظوا إنهم size wise بيختلفوا. This is methionine. Methionine. Is way is much bigger than a serine residue. Hello, for ATP it doesn't matter. La mir tabat al ATP with those two kinases ma bifrig shu size of the gatekeeper residue. La no la al adenine, wa la ribose, wa la phosphates ibtud khul bil hydrophobic pocket. Lakin the drugs li ihna rah nhki anham, in particular type one or type two, they do enter the hydrophobic pocket. Fabitali, for instance, if you would look at this drug, for instance, okay, 
if it has this group that needs to enter a hydrophobic pocket, for this enzyme it cannot, because the methionine size-wise is big. It will prevent this group from binding to the hydrophobic pocket. But if you look at this enzyme, estrine is a small in size, which means you know this naphthyl group can fit in the hydrophobic pocket enzyme. So for this kinase inhibitor, it will selectively bind to this enzyme, not to this one, because of the gatekeeper residue. Okay, so this is the contribution of the gatekeeper residue. It will distinguish or it will selectively allow some inhibitors to bind to the enzyme and other inhibitors not to bind to the enzyme. Okay. هلا بكل ال ال الانزيمز والبروتينز بغض النظر سواء كانت let's say حتى receptors كل البروتين structures يعني صح we do sometimes discuss them as if they are static molecules or static biomolecules but they are actually not they can adopt hundreds and hundreds of conformations in very short times يعني they are in dynamic state مستمرة دائما في حركة مستمرة Okay, diamond fee equilibrium between the active and inactive conformation. And diamond be cool, often. For sure, يعني إحنا اللي interested فيهم active and inactive conformation, but there are let's say, I would say, يعني I wouldn't say an infinite number, يعني عدد لا نهائي لكن بس بيكون في عندي عدد مهول من the conformations المحتملة ما بين the active and inactive conformations. Okay, لكن as I have mentioned in our course. وحتى كمان when you study any other uh, uh, biomolecule there are a what we are interested in are the active and inactive conformations okay هلا بحالة الكينازز one way يعني what is one way via which we can shift the equilibrium toward the active conformation غير الارتباط يعني هو ال 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 ATP بيرتبط في ال active conformation okay because the conformation now of the ATP binding site is open for the ATP to bind in okay لا يعني شو اللي بيتحكم إنه أو مثلا أنا كيف ممكن أتحكم إنه yes إنه نفس ال kinases ممكن يصير لها Phosphorylation, يعني نفس ال kinases اللي هي بتعمل phosphorylation to other substrates, هي نفسها ممكن let's say what we call upstream kinases تعمل لها phosphorylation. This is one way via which the equilibrium would be shifted toward the active conformation. أحيانا the translocation of kinases from one place to another in the cell is what leads let's say to their activation. Other ways via which kinases are activated اللي هي انه بيرتبط فيهم مثلا regulatory proteins يعني ارتباط other proteins with them may alter their conformation بحيث انه يفتح عندي ال binding site of the ATP ويرتبط ال ATP okay other let's say ways via which those kinases are activated اللي هي via for instance binding of small signaling molecules احيانا مثلا signaling molecules ممكن ترتبط ب عسبيل المثال here for instance which are called allosteric let's say signaling molecules اللي بتغير ال conformation بحيث انه تخليه او تعمل activation او تعمل stabilization لل active conformation where the ATP binding site will now be open for ATP to bind in okay so that equilibrium can be shifted toward the active or inactive conformation اللي بتحكم في many let's say things ممكن phosphorylation الإنزيم للكينيز itself ممكن some regulatory proteins ترتبط بها الإنزيم وتأثر على ال equilibrium ما بين ال active وال inactive conformation the translocation of the kinase from one let's say position in the cell to another um, um, for instance the binding of a small signaling molecules okay زي مثلا استكليك AMP على سبيل المثال إذا ارتبط بكينيز أو إن سم كينيزز إذا ارتبط فيهم السيكليك أي أم بي بيصير لهم اكتيفيشن. أوكي؟ هلا واي ذس ماترز تو أس؟ بيكوز أز أي هاف تيلد يو أو أز أي هاف أس أي تولد يو الكيني أو الكينيز انهبيترز اللي إحنا راح نناقشهم 
are what we call type 1 or type 2 inhibitors واللي هم DFG in, DFG out or those which bind to the active or inactive conformation. Okay? يعني رح نوصل لpoint hopefully and by looking at the structure you can determine what is a what drug binds to the active, what drugs binds to the inactive conformation. Hello. Like I've mentioned, in the one of the ways via which kinases can be activated is simply phosphorylation. Other kinases phosphorylation. Look at this structure, for instance. This is a an inactive kinase. What we considered before is the activation loop. That activation loop may have a an hydroxyl containing amino acid. Zay ish methalan. Tyrosine, serine, threonine. What is this residue you see in here? This one that I have circled, that's tyrosine, okay? So in this specific enzyme, one of the amino acids that can be found in the activation loop is a tyrosine, okay? Now, let's see how it's going to the relative position of that tyrosine. If this tyrosine gets, gets phosphorylated, the phosphate group that is added to the tyrosine, Will it increase its uh, polarity, its water solubility, will, or will it decrease it? Increase it for sure, because it's an ionizable group, okay? فبالتالي راح تصير عندي هاي الفوسفوريليتد تايروسين more, way more water soluble. It will, يعني لاحظوا between those two, let's say, conformations, لاحظوا انه كيف عندي تغير its position, its position now, in the active conformation, it's facing what? The water, or the solvent that is surrounding the kinase. Now, between those two conformations, look at this hind region of where the ATP binds. In which conformation it's more open? Yeah. So in the inactive conformation, when the tyrosine was as if it's facing or pointing towards the enzyme, لاحظوا إنه بيكون عندي جزء من the activation loop will a glycine rich loop in secrene the ATP binding site. When that tyrosine gets phosphorylated, it will rotate. And by rotating, كل شيء مرتبط فيها راح كمان يلف معها. Where now the activation loop will get away from the ATP binding site. وبرضو كمان it will change the conformation of the act of the glycine rich loop. Where this area in here. That ATP binding site will be. خليني أشيل كل هاي على أساس إنها تكون أوضح لكم. لاحظوا إنه the space here of the entrance to the ATP binding site now is way more available or accessible to ATP to come in and bind. Versus the inactive conformation. لاحظوا كيف بيكون عندي the glycine bridge loop with activation loop وكأنهم they are blocking the entrance to the ATP binding site. Okay. Need you hella to what we mean by the DFG motif in or out. So the DFG motif is a segment of a, a loop in the C, let's say loop, that is composed of three amino acids. Hakina aspartic acid, ophenyl alanine, and glycine. Okay. Hella be il. An inactive conformation, the one you see in here that is, let's say, um, colored in green. This red loop in here is the activation loop. DFG motif bikun indi ala another, let's say, loop. What matters is that this segment in here, which represents the aspartic acid and this phenylalanine, okay, lahadu bitkun indi. The aspartic acid وكأنها pointing out, pointing away from the ATP binding site. That is why we call it DFG out. Okay. هلا في حالة ال activation of the enzyme, or when the conformation is in the active form where the ATP can access the ATP binding site, the DFG بتكون in the N conformation state. When we say in, معناها إنه أنا بتكون عندي الأسبارتيك أسيد بتكون pointing towards the binding site of ATP. Okay. Something else we need to consider 
از ذات لما يتتغير عندي الاسبارتيك اسيد برضه كمان الفينيل الانين بتتغير اوكي هلا الفينيل الانين وهي مش رح مش كثير واضحه بهاي الايمج بس اي ويل شو ات تو يو ليتس سي ان اذر كريستال ستراكشرز الفينيل الانين يعني فور انستنس اف يو لوك ات ذا اكتيف كونفيرميشن الفينيل الانين بتكون مسكره عندي هون او ات ذا جيت اوف اي وات وي كونسيدر اللي هي ان الستيريك سايت or a pocket or a binding site that is close to the binding site of ATP. تمام؟ بتكون عندي in the DFGN that phenylalanine مسكرة that allosteric site. In the case of the inactive conformation, بتكون عندي هاي الالوستيرك site الفينيلالانين is away from it. It's not closing that allosteric site which would allow for drugs that have allosteric segments in them to go into that allosteric site. رح نحكي عنها بالتفصيل الممل بس نشوف let's say the other crystal structures. فلو شوي مش واضحة هلا don't worry about it. يعني hopefully you will be able to comprehend it later. Okay. Here's let's say another image of the same exact let's say two conformations اللي هم the active and inactive conformation. Okay. هلا generally the inhibitors اللي رح نحكي عنهم are subclassified into type 1, type 2, 3 and 4. Okay. هلا 3 and 4 ما رح نحكي عنهم لأنه already يعني there is let's say there isn't up to this point FDA approved type 3 inhibitors that have been approved. فرح نحكي فقط عن type 1, type 2. نفرق بيناتهم انهم بيرتبطوا ب which conformation الاكتيف وال inactive نطلع على ال overall scaffold of their structure and be able to distinguish which can be considered a type 1 and which can be considered a type 2. Okay? هلا type 1 is the one or is the inhibitor that binds in the hind region او محل ما بيرتبط عندي ال ATP. Okay? لكن it favors What do you think? The active or the inactive conformation? The inactive. Ah, sorry, sorry. No, the active. Okay. It will be the DFG N or the out N. Okay. Type. Type two. Of an DFG. Only the aspartic acid that you see in here is shown. Look at the aspartic acid. How it's let's say. Pointing towards the binding site of the ATP. Type type two. It favors the inactive conformation. Okay. If DFG is in or out, look at the aspartic acid. It's out. Okay. Hala bina an ala il let's say the DFG motif. لما تكون N بيكون an active conformation okay and let's say the allosteric site بيكون عندي closed by the phenylalanine alright and this is what type 1 favors the active conformation the inactive conformation this conformation is favored by type 2 kinase inhibitors with DFG بيكون عندي out look at the aspartic acid how it's pointing away from the active site or from the binding site. Okay? Hala, type 3, ولزي ما حكيت لكم, we will not talk about them. Type 3, they bind in the hydrophobic with allosteric sites. They do not bind in the adenosine binding site. Okay? We will not talk about them. With type 4, they usually bind let's say, at sites that are way away from the where ATP binds them. تمام? That's the variations between them. احنا بس رح نحكي عن type 1 و type 2. Here's another image of two kinases or two crystal structures of kinases bound to their inhibitors. Okay? This is a type 1 inhibitor that forms or favors the active conformation where the DFG motif, the aspartic acid is pointing as if it's away from the 
binding site of ATP. بتكون عندي الفينيل ألانين is closing the allosteric site. Okay. As for type 2 favors the inactive conformation, the DFG motif بيكون عندي out, where the aspartic acid, as you can see, as if it's pointing away from the ATP binding site, will phenyl alanine command, it can indeed let's say away from the opening or the entrance of the allosteric site. Size wise mean akbar in terms of structure. Type 1 inhibitors will the type 2 be right. Type 1 um, what is shown in, in, in gray, this represents an enzyme. Okay, and what is shown or what is highlighted in purple, this represents the drug. Same thing for type 1, what is highlighted in purple or pink, this represents the structure of the inhibitor. Mean akbar, usually structure wise. Type 1 will a type 2 inhibitors. Type 2. Okay? Type. Doctora. Um, let me skip this one. Doctora. Antakil Mubashara an Nikki an il type 1 with type 2. Okay? Shanit Maizu. Hello, when we say type 1 inhibitor, such as for instance this one. Okay? Bira ikum. Lo anamathalam diakikum, which part of this drug? is the one that binds to the hinge region. Is it ring one, you think, will uh, ring system two? Two, okay? That's the part of the drug that would mimic the adenosine for ATP. Bimana, you know, this part of the drug, I, I, yani, we believe, is the one that will bind to the adenosine binding site, forming hydrogen bond interactions ma the hand region, okay? Hala, directly attached to this hand binding region, راح تكون عندي a ring system that can access the hydrophobic pocket. يعني, let me go back to this structure. يعني, um, imagine, you know, this is a cross section of the ATP, or of the active site of the kinase. وكأني أنا بطلع على kinase from above. This is the hinge region, okay? This is the drug that is shown in white. That's the drug or the kinase inhibitor. تمام? هلا. The ring system, طبعاً ال ال يعني the nitrogen. Sorry, إنها مش مبينة هون. In the a ring system that has the nitrogens is where it will bind in the adenosine binding pocket, and anything that is let's say, uh, um, hydrophobic in nature will access the hydrophobic pocket and anything more will or can bind into the allosteric site. Okay? Hello, look at the DFG motif. Is it in or out? Out. Okay? So this one is binding to the active or inactive conformation of the kinase. Inactive. Is it a type 1 or type 2? Two? 2. The inactive become type 2. Okay? Type. Hello. So we did recognize you know, this ring system is the one that will bind to the hinge binding region, or in other words, where adenosine fil ATP binds in. Now, whatever it's connected to it can reach to the hydrophobic pocket. Is this ring hydrophobic? Yeah, it's a benzene. What's it doing? Fluorine and chlorine. Will halogens, generally speaking, lipophilic in nature. So this is a drug you think is type 1 or type 2. This is a drug. Do you think is it type 1 or type 2? Type 1, exactly. It favors the binding to the active conformation of ATP, uh, uh, sorry, of the kinase. Okay? So again, this is the ring that binds to the adenine pocket. That's the one that will reach to the hydrophobic pocket. This solvent region part of the drug, رح نحكي عنه بس رح نحكي عن the design of الجفتينب. Okay? We will consider that later, but don't worry about it. 
هلا يعني an easy way for you to determine a type 1 and a type 2 حددوا وين عندي انا الرينج او الجزئيه من الدرج اللي ممكن ترتبط في الادينين بايندنج باكيت اوكي then you can look at the rings that are attached to it تمام اذا اذا انا حددتها ممكن اذا شيء اتاتشت لها لها هيدروفوبيك معناها راح يرتبط بالهيدروفوبيك ريجن if there's another thing that is attached to that hydrophobic binding ring راح يكون mostly can access ال الالوستريك سايت بالتالي بيكون let's say a type 2 okay here's an image of the crystal structure وكاني انا بتطلع على الانزيم from the site this is the uh, ring that has the nitrogens لاحظوا انها عامله hydrogen bond interactions مع الهند region okay and this is the um, uh, halogenated ring that is accessing the hydrophobic pocket okay Airlutinib. What do you think? Is it type one or type two? One. Okay. Very similar to gefitinib. This is the ring that will bind to the adenine binding pocket. And this ring in here will be in the hydrophobic pocket. Exactly. Okay. This is an acetylene that is bound to a benzene. Both of those functionalities are hydrophobic in nature. So it's a type one that favors binding to the active or inactive. Active, the DFG motif. M. Okay. Type. I love for you. Let's say a structure of type two, and then you will be able, let's say, to distinguish between them. Type. This one. برأيكم, where, where is the part that will be able to bind to the adenine or which part of this drug is designed to uh, uh, occupy an adenine binding pocket? رقمهم. One, two, three, four, and five. What do you think? Yes, it's actually this ring, not just two, two and one. Okay. So that's the part that will occupy the adenine binding pocket. What is next to the adenine binding pocket? El hydrophobic. So this ring in here is the one you think will bind in the hydrophobic pocket, right? And if you look at it, is it hydrophobic in nature, this ring? Yes. Okay. Now the rest of the structure, yes, that one is or can reach to an allosteric site. So which type is this one to which confirmation it favors? An inactive confirmation, a DFG motif between in or out, out, okay? And here's a crystal structure, okay? As if we are looking from the front of the kinase. This is the ring system that is forming hydrogen bond interaction with the hinge region, okay? هلا على امتداد الهند ريجن زي ما حكيت لكم there is a gatekeeper residue and behind that that's the hydrophobic pocket where this methyl phenyl ring is occupying okay and the rest of the structure can accommodate an allosteric site which is open لانه الconfirmation of the DFG motif بس مبينة عندي الاسبارتيك اسيد فقط الفينيل الانين as if it's behind the structure بس لاحظوا كيف الاسبارتيك اسيد اوف ذا دي اف جي موتيف وكانها اوت اتس بوينتينج اواي فروم ذا اي تي بي بايندينج سايت اوكي طيب اوكي لاباتينيب وسورافينيب وات يو ثينك تايب 1 اور تايب 2 2 وات اباوت السورافينيب Where is the ring in lapatinib that can uh, um, or that do occupy the adenine binding site? Is it the furan or this ring in here? Yeah, it's this ring in here. This is the one that will bind in the adenine binding pocket. What about this one? Yeah, that's the hydrophobic. This will occupy the hydrophobic and the rest of the structure can reach to the allosteric. 
مش شرط انه الالوستيريك تكون دائما الكونستيتوينتس او البارت اوف ذا دراج يكون لايبوفيليك اور هيدروفيليك ان نيتشر ات ديبندز يعني الامينو اسيدز اللي موجوده عندي بالالوستيريك سايت تختلف from one enzyme to another. In some enzymes, ممكن تكون most of those amino acids hydrophobic in nature. In other enzymes, ممكن تكون for instance hydrophilic in nature. ف it differs from one enzyme to another. ف the variations اللي راح تشوفوا بالالوستيريك binding group بأي drug ب type two kinase inhibitors في اختلافات كبيرة بيناتهم. Okay? يعني for instance, if you look at um, الإماتنب على سبيل المثال لاحظوا إنه أنا بيكون في عندي an ionizable group in here which makes the compound or this part of the drug highly lipophilic. If you go for instance to lepatinib, this is a hydrophobic allosteric binding group. So it depends eventually على الأمينو أساسي اللي موجودة عندي في الالوستيريك سايت. طيب السورفينب برأيك وين ال الرنج اللي راح ترتبط في الأدينين pocket اللي فيها أمين Yes. Which one? And I have many nitrogens. Yeah, for sure. We are talking about, let's say, let's say this ring in here. Okay. That's the adenine binding group. This one, the hydrophobic, or this one, reach the allosteric site. Okay. Um, Hala low for instance, if you would consider in nulfuran is the one that can reach all the way to a hydrophobic pocket, um, you will be flipping the entire structure. All of that would be as if it's protruding outside of the binding site. We may know lipophilic, let's say, what is known as a uh, uh, Let's say solvation penalty. يعني على الأغلب لا the binding mode for this drug بيكون let's say the furan will not reach the hydrophobic pocket. Yes. يعني لو أنا فكرت يعني لو تفكر فيها you will be flipping the drug entirely. حتى الأدينين الضل محل ما هي وحتى كمان if you flip it بصير عندي nitrogen let's say here it may become a way. From whatever amino acid, sorry, this group uh, may form with the hinge region. لو وصلت هاي عندي لا ال hydrophobic pocket معناها كل هاي الجروب راح تطلع من وكأنها طالعة من ال binding site. ولأنها lipophilic راح يصير في repulsion كبير بينها وبين ال solvent. فلا for this drug ما راح يكون this is the binding mode definitely لا. وال crystal structure يعني um, على فكرة الكودز اللي أنا حطيتهم هنا are the codes for crystal structures of those drugs binding to their enzymes. In the crystal structure, you will definitely see enolafuran will be, let's say, يعني if we are to imagine it, وكأنه أنا الهند region وراي بتكون الفيران على يمين الهند region. Will the phenyl ring or the chlorophenyl على شمال الهند region inside the binding, inside the hydrophobic pocket. Okay. يعني if you can up to this point it may as well active will inactive the FGN will out will the inhibitors uh, let's say um, which one favors or oh, is it type one or type two this would be great okay so we'll stop here when شاء الله المحاضرة الجاية راح نبلش نحكي عن specific drugs the designs of uh, of gifit uh, sorry gifitinib or imatinib um, يعني hopefully by the end of this the coming lecture راح نكمل the kinase inhibitors تمام يعطيكوا ألف عافية. في أي حدا من اللي موجودين أونلاين عنده سؤال؟ دكتورة دكتورة تفضل أنا مش عارفة أميز بين الـ type 1 و type 2 طيب إحنا رح ناخذ let's say more examples المحاضرة اللي جاي Uh, if it's still, يعني إذا أنت جاي المحاضرة الجاي إنه definitely راح تكوني وجاهي. Let me know if إذا ما كانت لسه مش واضحة, uh, I will definitely explain it to you إن شاء الله بالمحاضرة الجاي in person. تمام؟ okay. okay, thank you.